started photography in 71. I mean, what do you know when you're a kid? Not, not much, but, uh, but I was really taken with, uh, with the photograph, like everybody would be, with the photographs of Ansel Adams. So I went to a workshop. Turned out you could go meet Ansel Adams and work in Yosemite. And of course, the West, just, I'd never been West out of Texas. And it just floored me, the space in the West. And then these, you know, everybody at the Yosemite workshop where West Coast photographers had all these craggy landscapes. I mean, there's not a rock in Smith County, Texas, or Tyler, Texas. And these were photographs of nothing but rock. Obscure watershed, way up in the Natchez Valley, the Black Fork Creek. And I, I live on Black Fork Creek. I've lived all my life on Black Fork Creek. So the landscape's not very um, scenic. There's no rocks. There's no mountain ranges. No waterfalls. No big trees. There's no. So it's pretty subtle. Um, but I just had faith that everything I needed for a photograph was within arm's reach. All the Black Fork Bestiary animals in my whole bestiary. It's about 40 photographs in that series, and they're all just out of the backyard, out of the neighbors. I mean, my neighbor phoned me up one morning, my 90-year-old neighbor, and says, "Robert, there's something wrong with my garbage can." And we'd known each other a long time, so I didn't ask a lot of questions. I just went over to look to see what was wrong with the garbage can, and a big possum had climbed into it. So, you know, I photographed a possum. So birds fell out of nests in the yard, snakes showed up, bugs showed up, um, and all of these I regarded as, you know, I'd just never seen them before and I'd never looked at them like this, but everything I need, all the, the subject matter I need is right here. So instead of being quite so localized, I wanted to go to Shiprock, New Mexico, which is a holy place to the, uh, to the Navajo Nation and some other tribes, and photograph. So I'd go back and back and back to Shiprock. And the space in the east where I live is not like the space in the west where I was going. In the space in the west, there's horizon lines and distant vistas and kind of this volume of air that you Got to, got to handle in some way. So I have to say the the light out there was different. It's a lot more elevation than, than where I live. And the most recent photographs, and the photographs I like the most, I kind of quit looking at Shiprock and just started looking at the shadow of Shiprock and the shadows of things. And that's translated even back into East Texas, where I, you know, kind of a contra person. I'm always not looking at the performer, looking back at the faces of the crowd looking the other way than the way I'm supposed to look sometimes. photographing some still lifes, but they were just too still. So I, using camera controls, mostly, you know, that the camera can see things faster than your eye can see and slower than your eye can see, I started shooting a still life series that I thought of as kinetic still lives. And there, it's just common objects right out of the trash or the yard or the whatever's blooming. You know, when there's magnolias, I photograph magnolias. When there's azaleas, I photograph azaleas. When there's Fallen leaves, I photograph fallen leaves. Just common items out of them. But I, I, I made them more kinetic, that they move, that they're in motion, that they're at least in mental motion, if not physical motion. And so they're more kind of an event where I'm photographing a moment than an assemblage. And uh, it's called Magic and Logic. And that's the series I've been showing at, at Photo Relevance. So when I was a kid, I loved, for some reason, sitting in the Methodist church in Tyler, Texas, I loved the, the story of Job. 
not the whole story because it's full of a lot of boring speeches, but just the exciting parts. So at one point, at the end of Job, God shows up to talk to Job, and he's in a whirlwind. So I'd always thought, this is, you know, whirlwinds. God shows up in a whirlwind. He's not in a chariot of fire. He's not, you know, disguised as something else. He shows up as a dust devil, basically. So once I'm out walking around in the Black Fork Creek bottom, and this dust devil came through. So I ran to catch up with it and got into this dust devil. I looked down and I was covered with about 500 grasshoppers, you know, which were my good friends from the Black Fork Beast area. And it was just such a moment. It turned out dust devils are mostly full of grasshoppers. And um, I, I, I did feel a little enlightened. But that idea, I took it in. I wanted some tornadoes to come into my studio. I thought, well, I want to photograph a tornado full of things. of a new idea. So in, in Magic and Logic, I've, I've got you know, ideas lined up to infinity, and I'll build them out one by one, and uh, sometimes I quit when I can't get them built the way I want to build, or uh, you know, they just won't work for one reason or another. But usually they lead you to the next thing, and then you have another new idea. These images are made to be to be beautiful images, to be uh, kind of revelatory images where you see something new and personal, and uh, they celebrate life and light and, uh, and kind of the interwovenness of all, all of our existence together. And they celebrate ideas. You know, the, the best thing a human can have is a new idea. It's kind of our only product. We don't make plastic forks and we don't really make nuclear weapons. We have ideas and you just want the ideas to get better.